Hey guys, welcome back to a new Q&A. If you're new here, hello, my name is Amy and let's get started right away with the first question. And by the way, all these questions, I asked them on my Instagram stories. Bag du jour, what other items do you plan to let go? Let me have first dibs lol well you already have first dips because you're one of my members in any case i think two q a's ago i had briefly kind of mentioned which items i might let go at the time i was thinking of the chanel bucket bag possibly the extra mini coco handle some accessories here and there like the chanel belt that i have that is not in my size the nano speedy i don't really know when i'll have another lock sale just yet but for sure all of my friends and family usually have first dibs and then of course my members which is how i've done the last couple of lock sales as well i've always mentioned it to the members first i gave them heads up and then i went public who is pandora 360 what products are not included in the pre-spend at hermes vancouver thank you this is all speculative of course because this was not from the actual store. No managers or no essay told me exactly that, but this is just from sort of like everyone's experience and common knowledge and also friends that I have that also shop the same store here. So as far as I know, all the leather goods don't count. So all the bags don't count. It doesn't matter if it's quota, non-quota. As far as small leather goods, I was also told that they don't count as well. Anything from wallets to card holders. I'm not so sure about belts and things like that. I don't know for sure, but I also heard that fashion jewelry also doesn't count. Take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, you can be as strategic as you can but at the same time you still have to shop with your heart and always buy what you actually love and will use so if you want to get that belt if you want to get that card holder you should go for it just because they don't count towards the pre-spend doesn't mean that you should not buy those at the end of the day a variety of items and categories on your profile will always make you look good and the more you get into the brand the more you'll realize the things that work and don't work and the more you might end up loving a lot of things that you didn't love at first which is i think happens to a lot of us <laughs> next question by selena saplau what do you think of the new chanel fall winter 23 collection the theme this time was camellias which is sort of that iconic timeless symbol of the chanel house they had a centerpiece which is like a huge camellia in the middle of the runway as for the collection there was a lot of tweed there was a lot of just very neutral black white grays some burgundies in there so um it's a very pretty collection and i've always loved looking and watching chanel's runway collections because they make it look so pretty now whether those things translate well into actual products that the public can shop and buy that is another story i have a good friend here on youtube he's been into chanel since i think the 90s and um he's definitely noticed a lot of the decline in the quality so forget about the price we're talking strictly the quality of just the material that they use not just bags obviously bags count but like we're talking about all the accessories and the fabrics the quality definitely has declined over the years and so um yeah i mean i like the collection yeah but does it mean that it's gonna look nice and feel nice necessarily I wouldn't able to I wouldn't be able to tell you until we see it. Coco Bell 77, do you have a fitness routine? I don't. And you will be appalled at the level or the lack of exercise that I do. And I've spoken about that many times in the past. I love being active, especially when I was younger and when I was capable. But now that I'm not and I do live with a chronic disease that kind of prevents me from overexerting, uh, it's really hard for me to to do a lot of intense exercise having said that i always try on my good days i always try to go for walks and um i guess my most intense exercise is walking all the chores that i do at home and just whenever i have the energy to go out for for a walk for some fresh air that's my exercise so no i don't have a routine and like i said most people will be shocked at the lack of exercise and how sedentary I am. Miles and Sid, how do you deal with the H journey 
comparison between you and your peers. Comparison is the thief of joy. And so knowing that, I really try my best not to compare. Having said that, we're all human. It's hard not to get in our heads and think negative thoughts. For me, whenever I get into these negative space and just like down days, I'm actually having sort of like a down day today. Like everything's just not going my way and I'm tired and fatigued, but you have to move on and you have to get on with it. You still have to keep grinding. And one thing that I um, tell myself is that whenever I have these thoughts, like if I'm in a negative space and I'm comparing myself and I'm making myself miserable and feel bad about myself, that also means, in my opinion, that I'm having a mindset of scarcity, which I'm not like that. I definitely am not that kind of person. I like to believe that a mindset of abundance is not only possible, but is available to everyone. Everyone has 24 hours, everyone has the same opportunities. Don't get me wrong, I don't mean that everyone's background is the same, right? We, we all come from a different background, we we'll all have different resources to start with, but it doesn't mean that we're not capable of making things work for what we have and for what we can achieve. So given what I have been doing and have achieved and also instead of concentrating on the lack of concentrate on what i already own and have gratitude that really puts me into a better headspace and so yes i do have my bad days if there's something that i want that is not and i just have to try to achieve it just by having the goal of wanting it you will somehow one day achieve it. I really truly believe it. It doesn't mean that it's gonna be right away, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be easy, but it means that once you have that goal, even though it's not easy, it means that it's achievable, that you can do it, that you can make it happen. And when it does, you're gonna wonder like, oh, I was so lucky and I, I can't believe I get it, but if you didn't ever think about getting it in the first place, you'll never even get it. You have to be persistent and you just have to work towards your goals and achieve them one at a time. That's a big question uh, and also a big answer from me, but um, how do I deal with the comparison? I just, I just snap out of it. I have to think that, you know, if it's meant to be mine, it's meant to be mine. And I just have to work really, really hard at it and think that is possible. Also from Miles Insid, a fun one, if you can steal a bag from Kat, Isabel, and Clara, what would it be? So from Clara, my friend Clara, I would definitely steal her box leather, black color, Constance 18. It's a gorgeous bag. It's one of those bags that I don't have yet, and I definitely want one. The fact that it can patina, and it will patina over time, and it will look kind of banged up at first when you get your first scratches, but over time it will look more and more beautiful. It's a bag for life, so I definitely will steal that from Clara, from Isabel or Kelly Mini. She has the black Epsom. <laughs> Again, I'm stealing all black bags. What is going on? And of course from Kat, I would steal actually two bags from her. So I would be cheating, but let's just say the first pick of the two, I think for me, I will steal her mini Kelly as well because I always love getting a dark color and a light color. But let's just say that I'm not gonna be this mean because she just got the bag. I'm not gonna steal it yet. Um, then I'll go for her Constance 18 gorgeous white color Constance 18. So yeah, those would be my pick. And I think, yeah, hers was in Nata Epsom. So I would I would basically steal every Constance and every Kelly Mini that they have. <laughs> Question by Keiki Me. Do you still wear your Cartier bracelet every day now that you have your Tiffany lock bracelet? And of course I do. I wear them on my separate arms, but I also love that I can change it up. So because this bracelet can be removed so easily. I can definitely also wear it on this arm at the same time and wear both. <laughs> the next question is from my friend Kat, Kat L here on YouTube. What's next on your fine jewelry wish list? Babe, you already know what it is. And I mentioned it in my wish list video. I definitely had this gorgeous bracelet as my biggest ticket item that I really wanted to get first. And then once I get this, 
then I can work on the rings, stacking ring on my index finger for my left hand where um, it will go with my wedding set. And I definitely have my eyes on a few. And yeah, stay tuned for more unboxing, I guess, because um, I definitely want to add more fine jewelry in my collection. Next question is by Lux Monologue. If you could only own two Hermes Quota bags, which are the two and why? I don't own the Mini Kelly yet, although I imagine that I would have a ton of use out of that one just because I'm a super, super, super big user of of mini bags that alone you knock out one quota bag even though it's such a small quota bag right and so i'm left with either a birkin or a kelly in the regular size in my case 25 would be my regular size and i'm having a hard time choosing between the two because i love the birkin <laughs> i i think the birkin is just so cool and so easy uh, but at the same time, I really appreciate the Kelly. Sometimes I just don't want to carry my bags, like on days that I'm tired or on days that I just feel like it would be a lot more easy to have a shoulder strap. And even just the fact that the handle is bigger so I can get my arm through. Um, and I don't really want to get any bigger sizes. Like I don't want to go into 30. Even though it's a hard one, I will have to choose mini Kelly and a Kelly 25. Um, cellier for me because those I think if I could only have those two those would be for sure forever bags that would cover a lot of scenarios like everyday bag for my Kelly 25 and the Kelly mini would be like also an everyday bag but also like a very dressy occasional bag if I could have three that would be a lot easier Birkin 25 Kelly 25 and mini Kelly those three would really be a perfect three quota bags from the house that uh, I couldn't ask for better if I could do that because yeah but if I have to choose I would have to side with the Kelly 25 only because of the added practicality also by Lux Monologue VCA vintage Alhambra necklace or the Hermes finesse necklace I'll have to say VCA just because I have tried the finesse necklace and it's really pretty. It's like, you know, it's kind of like, um, I think it's kind of like this length, this shorter necklace that I have here. It's this length and it has a really pretty pendant charm and it's so sparkly and everything, but the price is astronomical for what you get. And don't get me wrong, I love my diamonds. I couldn't pull the trigger. I just didn't make sense to me and it wasn't adding so much value to my stack. I prefer my stack right now more than having that necklace. So if I could buy between the two, I would go for the Alhambra because that one is more statement. I feel like you get more versatility out of that one because it's solid gold. You can stack several other necklaces together but have diamonds with it. And I also think that it's more value for your for your money. LWQV, would you recommend the LV Nano Speedy? Here's my little Nano Speedy in her super cute self. I have the strap right in there. Um, I, I think it's a super cute bag and at the current prices of how luxury bags are across all brands, um, the fact that this is still in the $2,000 range. It's time to get it if you like it, like, because it's only going to go up. But of course, if you're going to buy this bag, you know that you're not going to fit your whole life in it, right? It only is good enough to put your phone and a few essentials, but it's super cute. You still get the speedy look, which is super iconic. There's something about the LV monogram that is so timeless that you... You can't really get with any other brands if that makes sense so i totally recommend it if you like it go for it but just know that it's more of a novelty bag and um you know you're not gonna fit your life in it for sure <laughs> also by lwqv thoughts on the classic chanel sling bags they're very nice and timeless if they work for you if they're actually comfortable and you can walk in them go for it. I think they are still so worth it. For me, I've tried them numerous times. They've never worked for me. My feet are just not made for that shape of shoe. I can't walk in them. I find them super uncomfortable, but I think they look amazing. I think they look so timeless. I think they work with almost all my entire wardrobe. So I think in terms of style and in terms of uh, longevity, and if you 
if they work for you, they are worth it because yeah, they're expensive, but they're not so expensive like their bags are that you're gonna get so much out of them if they work for you. Travi Vlog. Have you considered getting the VCA 5 motif bracelet and which one? I have two thoughts. I actually prefer the vintage Alhambra size charm. It's a really large bracelet. And with the size wrist that I have, I just don't think it's made for me because of my wrist. And even with this bracelet, which is an extra small, it's sometimes already kind of... <laughs> I'm gonna show it to you. Like it almost always wants to turn and just be sideways on my wrist. And so my other option left would be the Sweet Alhambra. That one I think it would work quite well because the motif is a lot smaller. Even if I adjust it, they wouldn't be too close together and looking weird on me. However, that one only comes in the hammered look and the rose gold, which is very pretty. But I much prefer the vintage if that makes sense and i also really really like the gyoshi and just because i know the vintage size doesn't work is pointless for me to get it chris tan if you could go back and retake one of your old videos which one would it be and why i don't know if i would necessarily retake any video or any specific video for that matter i always think that i'm imperfect in all of them and so I might have to redo everything, but at the same time, is it really worth my time? Not really. So in a sense, if I had to redo a video, it would be all of them, which makes no sense. Therefore, I wouldn't redo any of them. I would just try to improve every time, if that makes sense. Actually, which video would you want me to redo? If that's uh, if that's something that I, I can do for you, maybe you could let me know. <laughs> is the classic flop worth it new in 2023? Oh wow, yeah, the price nowadays is crazy, right? Um, the Classic Flap Small, the same one that I have, is currently 14,000 Canadian dollars after tax. Is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. But at the same time, if you don't have one and you're never gonna get one if you're always gonna tell yourself that it's not worth it, you're never gonna get one. Unless you buy pre-love and all those things, yes, you can do all of that. But let's just say you want a specific color that is seasonal or you want it brand new. You're never going to get one unless you decide to get one. So if you don't have one and you really want one and you really want one new, let's say, right? Even though it's not worth it, you should just bite the bullet and get it. But get it just the one, right? Get the perfect one for you, for your collection. It was never worth it for me all these years, all along when I was spending money on these seasonal bags before, I could have gotten the classic flap at any time, but because it was never worth it, I never got it. And then when we were hearing about this huge price increase in 2021, when we were all hearing the rumor that it was gonna go up 30%, yada, 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 I was like, okay, if I don't get one, I'll never get one, so I got one. And I'm glad that I did, even though it took all these years to do it. So. It's all relative. Manifesting things. Do you like the Picotin Cargo or So Pink or So Green? Um, I don't particularly dislike or like them. I think for me, So Green or So Pink, so basically like even the hardware is the same color as the bag. Um, I think they're fun, but there's something about a very classic just the leather and then the classic color hardware that really just speaks to me. So uh, I don't particularly dislike the so green or so pink, but I also don't particularly love them. They're fine. If those are the only ones that would be offered to me and I liked it at the time, I would get them. As for the cargo, I have to see it in person. I hear it's a really cool bag, but they were really rare. And they're also more expensive and they're made of fabric, if I'm not mistaken. And so um, I'll really have to see it in person. I do really, really love my one. Like my one is the touch and it's the black with the palladium. I think it's perfect. I think this is me. And this is the one that was offered to me at the time. So it was definitely like meant to be mine. So I love this one. Will I love the cargo when I see one? It depends. I think from first impression, 
I'm kind of indifferent to it. I don't know if I will really love it when I see it in person and when I hold it, what will I, what will I feel about it? Um, but I don't dislike it, so I'll never really say no to it. I'll just keep my doors open. Next question, what color would you like to go for your mini Kelly? Any color, <laughs> black, grays, gold, Etoupe, cre, nata, like all the white color range. I would not mind a, a beautiful red either, a beautiful green, like a beautiful emerald green. I think all of those colors are amazing. And as long as it looks nice when I see it and also aesthetically pleasing match me, you know, like me, my skin tone, and just generally what I wear, aesthetically it has to just go with my vibe then I'll take it because I honestly will take almost all colors unless it really is like kind of like an orange that doesn't really go well with my skin tone then no I'm not gonna take it. I am Alan Ma. Your jewelry and handbag collection are nearly identical to others. Did you get influence? Nearly identical to whom? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, did you get influenced? Um, sure <laughs> i mean it's it's hard not to get influenced by anybody i think everybody influences everybody the moment you're born you're influenced by somebody your parents um so i want to say that yeah a lot of things i got influenced but a lot of things it's also my own my own picking nobody influenced me for the gabrielle mini nobody influenced me for the chanel 19 and nobody influenced me for getting seasonal bags all these times. At the same time, I think there's a reason why the bags that I choose are popular. So, because they're great and therefore it's almost like a matter of you knowing about it and you knowing what you're getting into and deciding that you're gonna get it and therefore um, it can look very similar to what everyone owns. Okay, next question. There are three of them by the same person. Yama, Moto, Hiro, Michi, 2022. I hear that Hermes could be unofficially increasing the pre-spend before getting offered a quota bag. Is it true? I don't know. I've never heard of that. Again, it's very subjective and it's all very speculative. Subjective because it depends on where you shop, what the demand and supply is looking like over there. Because if you compare, I'm just gonna pull a city that I know, if you just compare like Singapore or Hong Kong to Canada, I mean, Singapore and Hong Kong have way more stock. And yeah, it's just hard to compare. I mean, the competition is gonna be fierce everywhere no matter what, but when you're working with a lot less stock and an increased popularity like it also depends on the ratio right like the ratio of like stock to people that shop at the store again i don't know for sure how many people are shopping in hong kong or singapore for example and again this is just an example i don't really know exactly but at the same time i know how it feels to to shop at my store and it's a very long journey but yeah in terms of pre-spend whether they unofficially increase it before you get a quota bag i mean i don't know i honestly don't know do you mean by like right before they offer you a bag they kind of like maybe hint at you that you have to buy more things that's possible uh that's also depends on the essay i think i uh, and it's hard because sometimes essays will really tell it to your face. I hear that that's definitely a lot more prevalent in Asia. In Canada and in the Western world, I think it's less prevalent. It's more hush-hush. Not because they don't want you to do it, but it's also because it's maybe unethical. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? How much people have had to spend in their stores and their cities you just sort of get a good idea that way because as far as i know right as far as i know in singapore it's one to one maybe 1 1.5 to one which is if you ask me it's amazing uh in hong kong it's also one to one usually right it doesn't mean that you'll get a bag right away after you spend one to one it just means that people often can 
talk about their wish list and can expect a bag around that time of their spend. Whereas in Canada, well, one to one, you may be considered extremely, extremely exceptional if you've gotten uh, an offer at one to one because the last I've always heard is that people tend to spend between two to one or three to one in Canada before they are due to get a bag just because there's just so much more time to spend because the bags there's just not enough to go around and because you have to spend longer you are spending more at the end for each bag that you get by the same person what should one do if offered a quota not to one specifications reject or accept it with reluctance i would never say you should do or should not do but in general if it were up to me i would reject it if it was really really far from my specs and what i would be willing to compromise um, because accepting it by reluctance is worse because now you're gonna end up with a bag that you don't love and when you don't love something you're not gonna wear it and it's a lot of money and it will take another whole year or however long and however much spending to get another bag so is that really worth it in my opinion no for your first kelly bag better to go with togo chev or Epsom. is the kelly better in cellier or retourner again these are all subjective and really is up to your preference because personally speaking i think the kelly looks best in cellier i personally think that um, the kelly looks best when it has sharp corners just because of the um of the angular like more trapezoid shape that it has so i personally think that having that sharp edge which is cellier looks better and when it's cellier i think a leather like epsom which keeps the structure the best looks best i'm also not opposed to chev but for some reason when i see chev because of its shine i don't like it on a bigger bag but I don't dislike it either, but I just prefer Epsom if I were given the choice. And so I think in order of preference, I would choose Cellier over Retourné. And for leather, I would choose Epsom followed by Chev. Having said that, it doesn't mean that in the future, right? After this bag and maybe after my Kelly Mini, um, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to go for the other sizes or the other styles or the other leather <laughs> again it'll just boil down to what's meant to be for me and also what i feel like is gonna add to my collection at that time but for my very first bag this is exactly what i wanted and speaking of i have stuff in it because i was just using it yesterday How many more years do you think you have for your Hermes journey? Um, if it's a bag per year, which it is a bag per year here. Um, how many more? At least, for me, at least two more because like I said earlier, I definitely still need or want a Mini Kelly and also a Constance 18. Those would really add to my current collection and really complete completed in a way but it doesn't mean that i'm not gonna want maybe other sizes after i get those two out of the way it just means that i have at least two more years to go <laughs> to go and to get what i really want so i'm really happy with my birkin i'm really happy with my kelly i would love another kelly in the mini and i would love a constance and after that then i'll decide what i need in my collection but for now those are the two so at least two more years. Anyway, thank you so much for all your questions. Again, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, subscribe to this channel. And if you don't know already, I also host a weekly live stream. If you want the ultimate experience, definitely join my membership because that's where I do more story times, more intimate story times and behind the scenes unboxings. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.